87% of our time is spent in buildings itself, at home, at work. There's another 6% we typically spend in transportation. So the time we spend outside, outdoors is so, so small. So I think in the face of a changing climate, in a more urbanized society, we have to bring the greenery to us. I'm Henry Gordon Smith, I'm a global citizen, and I run a company called Agritecture, which are global urban agriculture consultants, and also a very popular blog to learn about the future of urban agriculture. And we basically do all kinds of work across the sector, from corporates, to entrepreneurs, to cities, to help bring more agriculture to cities. The single biggest misconception about urban farming is that it can't be commercial, it can't be profitable. People think about, when they hear urban farming, they think community gardens, they think school gardens. They don't think high-tech greenhouses, high-tech vertical farms, or all of the numerous ways that you can grow food in cities. And they also don't seem to think that it can be a meaningful portion of the food supply. I think it's really important that we restore how cities used to engage with agriculture. When we developed cities, we would develop them near where people had the food to survive. And then as technology advanced, as the green revolution occurred, we separated agriculture from cities. We said farming, that's not for cities, that's for rural areas. But now because of climate change and shocks in the system, droughts, hurricanes, various issues that are affecting this global supply, even the pandemic is a shock in the system, we've realized we need to bring agriculture back into cities, we need to restore it. I think the smart city movement, this idea of making cities more connected, more intelligent through technology, through data, is really compelling and exciting. But I think we have to ask ourselves, can a city really be smart without agriculture? Being smart means thinking long-term. It means thinking prepared. It means thinking how technology can maintain your current situation and strengthen it. So there's nothing smart about a smart city plan without agriculture. It's ridiculous. I don't think that there's one size fits all. If we look at Singapore as an example, right, they import 90% of their food, so they represent cities on the most extreme edge of having a food security issue. They lack space, so they also represent a city that isn't going to be able to grow food by just planting outdoors. They're going to need to use high technologies for that. So how do they achieve that? I think that they're doing a couple of really good steps. The first step is recognizing urban agriculture. They've developed policy and zoning and incentives around urban agriculture that say this is allowed to be done on top of a parking garage or allowed to be done in a vacant area. They have a grant program which is very mature, significant millions of dollars for international companies to set up pilots in Singapore as part of the grant. They also are investing in the talent. We need talent in the city to be able to operate these farms and to help them scale. So I think when you're covering talent, policy and funding, that's when you're leading the way in that category. And Dubai is doing some of that, Paris is doing some of that, New York is doing some of that, but I'd say Singapore has now moved into the front runner of having all of the available infrastructure needed for that. We're working with the city of Dallas. We're designing their urban agriculture plan for their city. There's enough food in Dallas, but it's not accessible by those who are most vulnerable. So in those contexts, does making you know, large-scale greenhouses or premium producing vertical farms make sense as the way it might make sense in Singapore? No. In the context of Dallas, you need more community aspects to the urban agriculture program. So low-tech greenhouses on vacant lots, outdoor plots and pathways to use those access to the land. More farms in schools so that students, when they're you know, going to school and they have food access issues, they're getting fresh food on a daily basis from school. These are the lighter initiatives that are, have more of a community aspect that are lower cost and lower on the technology spectrum. We have a society that's growing up in cities. I grew up in Hong Kong and Tokyo. I did not have access to nature. And I think that I represent most of the future of society in the sense that they're growing up in cities away from green spaces. But there's something that we need. We need to have green space in our lives. And so if urban indoor spaces are part of our future, then we have to bring the green into these indoor spaces. Food is the next stage. Food is saying, okay, in addition to just greening the space for the psychological benefits, let's create an output that we can consume. That's very exciting too, to bring that into cafeterias, to bring that into restaurants. Thank you.